This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, and uh, this one really breaks my heart. Such a beautiful rig, a very powerful one at that, but it has very big problems. It does not boot into Windows, and without an OS, this whole thing is just one big paperweight. Nobody wants their beefcake to have problems booting, and that's what I am told happens frequently. The system will just splash straight into the BIOS or it might attempt to load Windows and then restart itself and the process repeats. That sounds to me like it could be a dead drive. It could also be a corrupt OS and we've run into both of those situations already in the playlist so this should be fairly easy to narrow down although we do need to see for ourselves first if we can even replicate the issue. Maybe it boots into Windows just fine here and he's I don't know, got a keyboard that has like a, a macro key that's been spamming nonstop and that's what's keeping it from posting. Who knows? There used to be so many different variables at play and that's why it's important that we try to isolate and narrow them down as much as possible here in the office. So like I said, this thing is loaded, RTX 3090 for the Win 3. Uh, he's got an AM4 platform, so I'm assuming it's gonna be something like a 3900X or maybe like a 5950X. Uh, loads of RAM, EK 360 mil AIO, a beefy fractal case and a beefy power supply. So yes, there is a lot on the line with this one. Hopefully we can have it up and running again very, very soon. Are you ready? Stay with me. Windows is by far the most popular computer operating system, but how many of those users would you wager are running unactivated copies? That pesky Windows activation watermark needs to go, and Kingwin is here to help. With competitive offers for both Windows OEM keys and Microsoft Office, Kingwin makes it easier than ever to unlock the full potential of your software. Simply click the link in this video's description, select your version of Windows or Office, and choose a secure payment method like PayPal. Also be sure to use our unique offer code SALAZAR, that's S-A-L-A-Z-A-R, to save 14% while shopping at Kingwin. First things first, let's see if we can replicate the issue described by the owner. I'm gonna power uh, on at the rear. We've got lights, looks good. Let's power up front. Got our portable monitor connected. I believe based on the description, we should get a post. So we should at the very least be able to get into the BIOS. His fans are set pretty high by default. Oh, there they go, they settle down. Let's see. Okay, that's good. And we get the uh, <laughs> select boot device prompt. So that means more than likely, it either doesn't detect a drive or if it does detect a drive or two, it doesn't know where the boot volume is. It doesn't know how to get into the OS from here. So let's see what we see in the BIOS. Now it looks like we have BIOS defaults and that's fine. He hasn't even enabled XMP, which we can do once we solve the uh, boot issue. But uh, yeah, pretty stock. You can see temperatures there, 42 degrees Celsius. Everything looks healthy. Let's see what he's got for boot drive. Okay, so he does have a boot option here. Samsung SSD 970 EVO one terabyte. And this is the only drive currently connected to the system. I think what we're gonna do, since it's not detecting a boot volume. So we've got CSM support enabled. We'll try disabling that. We'll change a few different settings here just to see if we can get in. And if we can't, then there are a few other ways to verify if a boot volume actually exists or not. A few moments later. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it looks like now, this is the first time this has happened, we're stuck on the splash page for the motherboard. So when I clicked boot override and selected the SSD as the option, uh, it kicked us here. And what you'd usually, usually see at this point is a spinny wheel that tells us that it's loading into the boot volume. It obviously can't do that. So this is just uh, more assurance that it's either a dying drive or a corrupt OS. I do wanna get in here and see what the drive looks like. If there are any physical issues, maybe the way that it's slotted in. Although again, it's being detected in the BIOS. Physically, it does check out at least what I can see that's not covered by the sticker. I'm gonna double check, see how old this drive is. It might be covered under warranty. Uh, nonetheless, if this is the issue, we're gonna go ahead and replace the drive outright, at which point we can pull the sticker off and see if there's anything wrong with the board underneath. Ooh, and I just noticed the viewer didn't install the standoff for the M.2. So the drive is basically just resting against the metal heat shield when it's installed. And that means we might have an issue with the physical connection in the M.2 slot further to the right here, which is not in focus. Let's see, now it is. So this connection here is typically pretty loose. You can slot the drive all the way in and just kind of leave it like that. But I strongly recommend actually bolting it to the board just in case things get a little loose, especially in transport, which this system obviously was in. For some reason I can't, uh, there we go, can't get the drive in there. So 
Yeah, we'll see if I can, uh, I might have an extra standoff or two I can give them. I actually just pulled this one from a motherboard that we replaced in a previous Fixer Flop episode. So uh, yeah, recycling for the win. So here's what's happening currently. I am updating his BIOS. I noticed the revision he has uh, installed now is from 2020, which I'm assuming is the one that shipped with the board in the box. So we're updating that one to a 2022 revision, stable, not a beta. Once that's in, uh, we're gonna clear the CMOS. I've checked connections, I've checked RAM. I've done my due diligence there. I, I don't think that would be a reason why a system would refuse to boot into a, a bootable volume anyway, uh, but I did want to make sure that those things are taken care of. The system physically looks really healthy. The last thing we can check after all of this is taken care of is uh, whether or not a boot volume is actually installed on the drive. And the way we can do that, first off, we could take the drive out and put it somewhere else, which I don't really want to do in one of my systems in case there is a physical issue with the drive. Or we can connect a bootable media device for Windows and check to see if we have partitions on the drive already installed for Windows. If that is the case, I will replace his drive with another one that is blank. We'll install Windows Fresh there. We'll keep the old drive connected. And then from there, we can run some disk checks to see if there's anything in unstable about the drive itself. That might sound super confusing, but I'm gonna show you it all right now playing out. Hmm, uh, that's weird. It freezes even when I try to load into my own Windows boot device, which I know works because I've used that in several rigs before. Something is really weird here. I'm gonna restart the rig just so I can capture this live on camera for you. So with the boot media installed, typically most modern boards will default to uh, that uh, media creation tool first, a bootable USB. And this looks like it's trying to boot directly into that. So it cuts to the motherboard splash page and kind of sits here for a second. You see the spinning wheels, that's good. And this is where it froze before. Okay, it actually didn't do it this time. <laughs> All right, maybe I just have to film everything and that, that'll, that'll fix the issues. Whoa, what just happened? Come on, I was just there. I was literally about to start navigating through to see if we had uh, boot partitions installed, but it just automatically reset. Something is going on here. I wonder if something is overheating in this rig. Maybe the, maybe the CPU is getting too hot and that's causing instability. Random shutdowns. I don't know. Let's see again here how long we can get this up and running. So we'll go over to next. We'll click install now. Of course, we're not actually gonna install yet, especially over this uh, drive we suspect is bad. I'm just gonna click, I don't have product key. And uh, any, any second now, it's frozen. Come on, come on. Wow. I think this is pretty revealing. Um, this, this tells me there's something else wrong with this rig. If both my bootable media and his boot drive are acting weird, I mean, the common denominators here are the CPU motherboard. Um, hmm, this is fishy. Yeah, it seems like no matter what I do, this system just either outright freezes or resets, which I've seen this before and I, I don't, I have a sneaking suspicion that this might be CPU temperature related or maybe voltage related. The block doesn't feel hot. Radiator's not hot. It really shouldn't be getting all that hot, just kind of idling here. But I noticed that the fans are definitely ramping up. So maybe they detect an issue with CPU temps. It's completely frozen, like completely locked up. Graphics card is not dangerously hot. Hmm, I wonder. I wanna see if maybe there's a thermal paste issue or a CPU block seating issue. You, you never really know. So let's see if we can get this off. Um, 
Okay, this is a Ryzen 9 5950X, as I suspected, a pretty beefy CPU. And thermal paste was applied correctly. Uh, it was spread correctly, so it looks like there wasn't an issue with mounting at all. But I swapped to air cooling just to be on the safe side in case there is an issue with that AIO and the temperature issues are in fact what I expect. Uh, looks like we're back in Windows. I'm gonna see here. Looks pretty stable so far. Wow, I wonder, yeah, I wonder if he had an issue with, with temperatures. I will say his rig sounds a lot quieter now, and I think that those fans ramping up were indicative of, of the CPU overheating. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one we select again. We're not gonna actually install Windows yet. I just wanna see what kind of partitions we're dealing with, if any. So, he does not have a boot, div he doesn't have a, what? He, d he doesn't have any boot partition here at all. There's nothing. This is just an allocation for games. That's it. I'm kind of confused here. Where is the... Oh, did it just... Ugh. It just froze and reset again. What is going on? This is nuts. Okay, let's see if it'll load back in. I'm just going to film this all the way through. I, again, I get complaints every now and then these videos take too long. Oh, you just need to get to the point. This is the point. I mean, this is why I show everything because you might run into a very, very similar situation. You're just following along, you know, <laughs> tagging along for the ride because you're just as curious as I am. That's why I don't want to leave much of this stuff out. Look, it freezes again. Again, I'm, I'm hearing now, I'm going to take the camera back off the tripod because I think this is, yeah, this is just going to reset infinitely at this point. Sorry about the autofocus. The rig is, is louder. It gets louder, noticeably louder, um, when we boot into the partition, uh, into the boot media, I should say. So I think there's some sort of voltage issue, some sort of power delivery issue to the CPU. I think the chip's getting too hot. I'm going to try to get back into the BIOS. And uh, yeah, and I didn't click record by the time this temperature had hit its peak. It's, it's mellowed out now because it's just chilling. And again, it's idling mostly in the BIOS here, but it was at 65C, which it should not be at. Um, at really any point during the boot process, unless it's you know intentional for some reason. The very first thing I'm gonna do is disable Precision Boost Overdrive. And I've got CPU V core set to 1.225. Now, to be clear, I shouldn't need to do this. The board should be able to scale voltage accordingly uh, and keep it from overheating. But maybe this guy just struck out on the silicon lottery and got a really bad chip. I'm not sure how that would have passed QC and made it into a 5950X but uh, it seems like that might be what we're working with here. All right, let's see how this goes. Uh, attempt number five here. So with the CPU undervolted, uh, cross our fingers and hope that uh, we don't have issues. So this drive just has big games on it. And I asked the owner if uh, there was anything sensitive on here, if he was concerned about losing these files. Uh, and he's got quite a number of games. Well, unless you have like two or three Call of Duty style games and you might have like yeah, half your space gone. But anyway, uh, I was told that this is not a big deal. I can get rid of these. So I think what I'm going to do is completely delete these partitions and reinstall Windows from scratch. It does seem like the system is more stable now, and that's a good thing. I don't want the system just shutting off or freezing randomly during a Windows install. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, yeah, we're going to go ahead and delete these and get Windows on there. So deletion one. Deletion two, we have all the unallocated space. We're gonna click next and we'll let Windows install. We are looking good so far. And now that Windows has finished installing, everything seems to be running fine. I'm gonna go ahead and swap back his cooler. Uh, his should be, again, a, a much better solution than what I've got in there now. So I'll make sure it's mounted correctly. Again, we'll repaste, of course. And then we'll open IDA64 because I want to check for stability long term. We'll let that test run for about 30 minutes. And if uh, everything looks good, temps seem fine, then we'll power cycle a few times just to be sure that it should boots into Windows consistently. And that will be it. Um, yeah, I, th this one kind of confused me. See, the owner of this rig told me that this Samsung Evo drive had Windows on it. Obviously it didn't. We fixed that for him. But he has multiple drives and uh, they were all taken out because apparently they have pretty sensitive work files on them. Uh, <laughs> clearly there was a mix up and this, uh, yeah, this drive he, he must have mistaken for another that, that has the boot volume on it. So 
the fact that this Samsung Evo drive was in the uppermost M.2 slot, I mean, that's ideally where you want your boot drive to be anyway. If you have an M.2 drive, put it in the uppermost slot. On most boards, that's gonna give you the NVMe speeds, that's gonna give you the really fast reads and writes so that your system you know, loads things, um, files that you store on it, including the operating system very quickly. So it's very likely that one of the other drives that the owner has, obviously the one with the boot volume on it, is dying or dead. And so I told him when he goes about reconnecting those that he makes sure to set this drive, the Samsung Evo drive, as his primary boot device. And you can usually just put it, it they're all ranked. You just set it to the top rank and it'll try to boot to that one first. All right, so let's see how we fare here. We've got everything reconnected. I'll put this uh, metal slab back over the M.2 once we confirm the temps and stability check out. So that's a good start. Loading directly into Windows. No freezing so far. It's a good sign. And right away stressing everything in the system. I've got GPU memory is set to gray. I've got CPU diode is that uh, grayish blue color. Not really the best contrast there. And then GPU diode is pink or purple. And they're all around 66, 67 degrees Celsius, which is a very healthy temperature. Uh, his storage drive so far is somewhere around 45 degrees, which is fine, and the motherboard is crispy cool. But you can see how our current CPU voltage is around 1.164 volts. The maximum was 1.212, which is just slightly under what we set it to uh, maximum in the BIOS, 1.225, I believe. Uh, looks like we have a lot more thermal headroom to play with, so I'm going to raise that voltage, the, the base voltage, just a tad, and uh, see if we can't squeak out a bit more performance, because right now, his CPU clocks are... Well, they're, they're not fantastic for 5950X. All right, and we're crossing the 38 minute mark. Temperatures are still fine. So it looks like the hottest thing here is a GPU memory, which is normal, 82 degrees is fine. 74 degrees for the CPU, the diode, which again is fine. Uh, looks like our, is it a GPU? Yeah, GPU diode is 76 degrees, 77, somewhere in that ballpark. So 70s is perfectly fine for that. Uh, 65 for the SSD and 45 for the motherboard. You can tell that, uh, yes, she's a bit loud, a bit hot. I think that the fan curve is really to blame here. The system could definitely be uh, quieter than it's currently set to, but uh, that's a personal preference and I won't mess with it because, uh, well, the owner might wanna change things after the fact. Ultimately, we were able to get the system back up and running again, which is the most important thing. Uh, it's the thing I always aim for in these videos, but there is still a bit of confusion left out there, obviously, with regards to the other drives that were attached previously to this rig. Uh, I am not entirely sure what we were seeing with the random freezing as the system was trying to load into Windows. Uh, even when it was trying to load into my boot device, it would randomly freeze. And yeah, I mean, I reseated the CPU, we updated the BIOS, I changed coolers it, it might have just been the way that the cooler was seated maybe mounting pressure I, I i can only test what i have in right in front of me so who really knows but uh it looks to be stable now again i power cycled it a few times it boots into windows every single time so should be good for the viewer going forward with that if you have a broken system something that uh, maybe doesn't turn on at all maybe it turns on it doesn't post maybe you have boot issues like this one had here be sure to reach out to me if you live in or around orlando florida if you can drop your system off in person and pick it back up i'd love a chance to fix it for free we charge nothing for the service and it's because of viewers like you that we're able to continue doing things like this on the channel so thank you very much for that if you haven't already subscribed consider doing that give this video a like or dislike depending on how you felt leave a comment in the comment section below i feel like oh, there's like something attacking my eyeball there we go and uh i'll catch you in the next one my name is greg thanks for learning with me